All right. Hello, everyone. This is Blake Bailey here from Process Tree Customer Success. Well, as I said before, uh, my name is Blake Bailey, and I'll be your host for today. I lead the customer success team here at Process Street, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our monthly webinar. So during our roughly 45-minute, maybe to an hour webinar, we'll go through pretty much everything there is to know about Process Street and take some time at the end to answer your questions. There we go. So Process Street is the simplest way to manage recurring workflows for your team. Using our system of templates and checklists, you can effectively store your institutional knowledge, collaboratively complete all of your most important tasks, record valuable data using forms, and automate your workflows with over 1,000 different integrations. So because our platform contains all of these exciting features, our clients report that Process Street saves them valuable time, enables consistent high-quality work, increases overall accountability, and helps them to onboard their new employees quickly and efficiently. Understandably, these benefits have made Process Street one of the highest rated services out there, with hundreds of extremely positive reviews on sites like Captera and GetApp. So let's get into exactly why people love Process Street so much by diving into my example Process Street organization. All right, here we are. Welcome to my Process Street organization, Manhattan Management Company. We're a totally hypothetical consulting agency that helps Fortune 500 companies manage their HR, marketing, sales, and, and client services. So before joining Process Street, we were spending a lot of unnecessary time and effort trying to ensure that everything was being completed according to our standard operating procedures, accounting for lost records, and just generally having to actually complete everything that needed to be done. Process Street allowed us to free ourselves from having to worry about what was going to happen if any of our longstanding employees decided to leave, if our new employees were following our SOPs, and just if our day-to-day -day operations were running as they should. Once we got into Process Street, uh, what we got to see, uh, what many of you got to see as well, I don't know whether or not you've signed up or not. If you haven't, go ahead and do that sometime soon. What you'll end up seeing is uh, what we're looking at right here, which is your home folder. And for everybody, it's going to look a little bit different. When you first come in, it's pretty bare, pretty open. Uh, and, and the whole point there is just for you to start creating whatever you like. What you see here are four folders that I have set up. You can set up folders however you like. Folders come right here if you click on new and then new folder. You can create folders to be able to separate your templates and therefore all your processes out into uh, you know, maybe based on your different departments, different work functions, or maybe even different locations of your business. So what you're seeing here, these four folders contain what's called templates and checklists. Those are the very backbone of Process Street. If we go right here into my sales folder, go ahead and collapse these, you'll see that I have three templates in here. I have the Bant sales qualification template, a client onboarding template, and a business partnership due diligence template. Now, a template is the same thing as maybe what you would consider an SOP. It is something like a recipe book. It's just the general layout of the steps that you would do if you were to be actually trying to run this particular process. Very similar to what you likely already have, maybe in an Excel doc, a Word doc, a Google doc, maybe just pen and paper. Maybe it's just somewhere inside your neurons of your brain. And uh, the whole concept there is that you, it's just the general steps that you know that you're going to follow to actually get this particular process done. Now, Process Street allows you to take that an entire step forward with the checklist. A checklist is where you're actually able to run an instance of that process. Say, for example, we're going to do client onboarding. We'll go ahead and just jump in there for a second. If you see here, this is the client onboarding template. So these are the set of steps that you would generally do if you were going to be onboarding a new client, collecting their information, going through the different services you might be offering them, scheduling meetings, prepping for those meetings, uh, conducting them, maybe pr you know, providing information, providing documents, whatever it might be. But generally, this is the set of steps that you are going to overall do for this particular process. And typically for an SOP, you would just be reading through that, you know, keeping it handy, just kind of looking at it and going, okay, now I gotta do this next thing and this next thing. And that's fine, of course. However, with Process Street, you're able to then actually run a checklist. Now, a checklist is now then somewhere where you're able to actually fill things out. This is where you can fill out things like form fields. Form fields allow you to collect information specific to one client, in this particular case for client onboarding. You know, maybe we're onboarding Apple. 
So we would run a checklist for Apple. And then we can record, you know, the client's name, we can record their email address, we can record what specific package options we're actually going to be offering this particular client. And uh, you, you can filter all through those different things. This is completely customizable and up to you on how you want to set this up. Every single thing here inside of Process Street in terms of your templates, completely up to you on how you want it to work. Now, the really great thing about this with checklists is the fact that, you know, you could be onboarding 10 different clients all at the exact same time. And maybe with one of them, you know, you've got one staff member who's, you know, in charge of onboarding this one client. And, you know, maybe you're, you know, what today you're going to get through half of those steps. You know, there's very specific information there. You know, they, they're actually getting all three packages, all three services, whatever it might be. You're able to specifically uh, denote that information inside the checklist for that client. And then you can go on to the next checklist for the next client and record that specific information just for that client as well. And that is going to help you to greatly keep things separate, increase your accountability, increase your efficiency, because you're now able to assign things to specific people. You can set specific due dates. You can do lots and lots of things inside of here that are going to allow you to make your business operate that much better. Now, what you'll notice here on the left-hand side are our tasks. Tasks are things that you're actually going to complete inside of a checklist. Of course, a checklist is made up of tasks. And there's also these things here called headers, which allow us just to separate this out into, into separate sections just to make it easier to see. Now, as you'll notice here with this form field, what's going on is that, you know, when we start off here, there's just this one task showing. Now, with this form field, we can filter through all of the different package options that we're going to be hypothetically offering Apple as a client. Maybe we're offering them recruitment services, strategy consultation, IT consultation. And what you'll notice is that when I select each of these different package options, for example, recruitment services, you'll see the recruitment services tasks show, and they weren't showing before that point. Same thing with strategy consultation and IT consultation. And the reason why that is happening is because we have a really awesome feature turned on here inside of this particular template called conditional logic. Conditional logic is a business pro feature. So I'll let you guys know that just in advance. If you're trying out Process Street for the first time, you have access to that. It's part of your trial. After that point, you'll go back. If you decide not to upgrade, uh, you'll go right back to the free plan uh, where you can still have access to that, but you will have uh, essentially a limit on your templates and checklists, things of that nature. Um, but definitely try this out. Definitely build some templates that use conditional logic, essentially a way for you to be able to conditionally show tasks when you need them and only and have them hidden in all of the other circumstances where you don't actually need them so in this case you got a new employee who's going to be doing the client package you know essentially the client onboarding in this case you're not going to confuse them they're not going to go start doing it consultation for a client who's not paying you for it they're only going to actually have to do those tasks when it is actually necessary so that's right here that's conditional logic you can set that up you essentially are just going to use form fields to decide uh, essentially which situation it is. You can use any of these different types. We'll get into actually how to build those out in a little bit. And then you actually just have a, a set of rules that show or hide particular sets of tasks when you need them. All right. Now, the other thing that you'll notice here is I've got these little red dots next to all of my form fields. Another really awesome thing, and this is on every single plan that you have access to, is required fields. You can make anything inside of here required which is gonna then ensure that you're not gonna go checking this off without catching the client's name first. So I can't go completing this, right, until I have the client's name, just like that. And now that that is complete, I can go ahead and check that off. Another thing that you'll notice that just happened is that right here, a bunch of these tasks are gray, but this task is now white and it wasn't before. Now, the reason for that is another Business Pro feature called Stop Tasks. What that is, is, is that allows you to enforce the order of the checklist. So this is going to ensure that you're able to go and do step you know, one before two, two before three, three before four, et cetera, all the way down. That also means that any assignments that you're using will also uh, essentially follow that same order. Now, I mentioned earlier that in addition to being able to fill out specific information regarding a client, you're also able to set due dates and set assignments, essentially saying, not only do I want this task to be done, but 
I want it to be done by this specific person, in which case we can assign them just like this. And you can actually assign people who aren't even in your organization yet, or you can assign somebody who is, or you can assign even an entire group of people, create a group, and you can assign that. So if you're going to assign the same group of people from human resources every single time to do this, well, you might as well just go ahead and actually put them into a group and then just assign that one group instead. Now, in addition to that, of course, you can also set due dates and that allows you to, uh, you know, make sure that this is getting done at the right time. Now, the really cool thing here about this is that with those assignments and due dates is that when you assign somebody, they're going to receive an email notification letting them know that they have to come in here and work on this. And there's links in there to come and do it. If you also set a due date, they'll know what that due date is in that email or if they come into here. But if they don't go completing that task by that due date, well, then they'll receive a second notification letting them know that they need to come in here and do it. Now, the same rules work for assignments and due dates on the entire checklist overall. So maybe you have a team of people who are going to complete very specific steps of that onboarding process or whatever process you might have, but you, you or somebody else might be the manager of that, maybe the account manager or something else, you know, essentially where you are the overarching uh, person responsible for the entire onboarding of that client or whatever, again, whatever else the process might be. In that case, you'd want to assign yourself or somebody else to the entire checklist and then you can also set a due date on the entire checklist as well. Same rules work. You'll get a notification when somebody is assigned uh, and then or whoever is assigned will get a notification and they'll receive another notification if they don't complete the checklist or if the checklist overall isn't completed by that due date. Now, I mentioned stop tasks. Stop tasks, uh, again, of course, they're going to enforce the order of the checklist itself. So making sure that I can't go in here and complete tasks that you know, are, are way ahead of where I actually am. And those notifications right here. So for example, I'm, I'm, I'm assigned all the way down here, but what's going to happen is that I'm not going to receive this notification to schedule this meeting until the task becomes available using stop tasks because everything else ahead of it is completed. So if everything else is still incomplete, I'm not going to receive that notification because I don't need to come in here and work on it yet. Stop tasks, of course, is a business pro feature. Uh, but even if you do have it, it is optional whether or not you want to use it. Same goes for conditional logic. You don't have to use any of the things that I'm showing you today. All of these things are completely up to you on whether or not that it fits the situation that you need. Maybe you can do everything all at once. It doesn't need to be done in order, in which case you don't use stop tasks. So the really great thing about both templates and checklists inside of Process Street is that you can fill it with all different sorts of content. This is where you can really extend the functionality of Process Street and really extend the, the, the value of your SOPs. So right here, you can see that, of course, I can put in uh, text and I can color that, bold that, justify it however I like. I can also put in links if I like to, to link out to other places. I can put that wherever I want. I can build that out however I like, however I like with line breaks and things of that nature as well. I can also put in images. And that's great if I want to maybe have a diagram or just anything at all to help me know what I need to be doing here. Maybe just a nice thing just to make it friendlier and, and, and just nicer to see. The other thing that you can do here, and this is really where you can extend this beyond your typical Word doc, your Google doc, et cetera, is that you can also embed videos directly into your templates and therefore all of your checklists. This way uh, you, you build it right into the template. You just grab a link to a YouTube video, a Vimeo video, or a Wistia video, or if you have the video on your computer and you want to just upload it, that's fine too. Either way, no matter how you get it in there, you just go ahead and uh, it'll automatically be here right for, for you when you're looking at the template, or if you do run a checklist, uh, whoever is actually working in that checklist can come right here and watch that video directly inside of Process Street without having to go anywhere else. They can just watch it right here. Really, really great, super useful. Of course, more links, things of that nature. And as we move forward, another thing that you can do too is you can also upload files right here inside of the template, right? So then every time you run a checklist, that file will always be there that you, know, you, you don't have to go hunting for, you don't have to go linking out to a server, you don't have to go to a Google Docs or anything like that. It's right here. You just click download and you have that file. You don't have to go you know, searching for it. 
uh, you can you can put as many of those files as you like. This is a great way to maybe to store files that are relevant to your process. A uh, really good example for that is maybe you're onboarding a new employee and you want them to fill out a W-2. I don't know about you, but every time that I've ever started working somewhere and they tell me to, I, you know, they need a signed W-2, for some reason they never give me a W-2 and I have to go hunting on the IRS website uh, you know, to, to try and find that, that latest document. And I got to download it and then you know, from there, after I maybe find the right one, fill it out, and I got to sign it, and then I got to you know, go turn it into somebody physically and do all of that. Well, instead, you can just have somebody come in here, run a checklist for them, assign them to it. They're a new employee. You can even automate all this stuff that I'm saying here. Have them download that document, have them fill it out, have them upload that document right back here into that same checklist. They don't have to go bringing it to somebody, any of that stuff. They just go ahead. They can even just take a picture of it. Your phone's kind of a scanner at this point anyways now. Uh, just have them automatically just upload that file right back into here. This is a form field, so it's kind of the inverse version of this, right? Uh, where you can upload the signed, completed document right into the checklist for the HR manager or whomever else to access it now or at any time in the future. That's totally okay too. Something really, really useful about this, of course, you know, we've got all these form fields, assignments, uh, you know, all this other content as well. Really, really useful, but a lot of times as you're working through something, you know, you may not think of every single form field that you need. You're not, you, obviously, you've got contact, you know, what strategy you're going to go through, what failed strategy, what are the current priorities. But maybe there's other information that you're just not going to think of or that, that might not come to mind or might not be as relevant until you actually need it. And in those circumstances, you're going to want to use the comment functionality of Process Street. This is automatically built into the bottom of every single task. You don't ever have to think about this. It's not anything you have to go adding in. It's always there. And you can write comments to your colleagues about anything regarding this task. For, of course, you can write anything you want in there, but that you probably want to keep it you know, on message with what's going on here. And you just want to write that comment. And as you're doing that, you can say, hey, and you can just put a little at sign. And you can actually mention somebody Say, can you take this over? There we go. I can comment that to her. Before I go assigning her, I can make sure that it's okay. You know, I could just check with her. Really cool thing about those comments, if you do at mention somebody, they're going to receive an email. Right now, Beverly just got an email. It said, hey, Blake Bailey just uh, mentioned you in a comment on the conduct strategy review with client task of the Apple checklist of the client onboarding template. There's links back to all of that stuff. She could come right back in here and respond, or she can hit reply on that email in her inbox off of her phone, wherever she is, and say, hey, uh, you know, I can't do it this weekend, I'm in Mexico. Uh, and then she hits reply, hits send to that email, it'll automatically just append that right back here to the bottom of this comment, I'll get a notification, and I can see that we can have a whole chain back and forth. If maybe we were working on some documents back and forth together, uh, we had a bunch of drafts that we were going through. We can always attach those as well right here to the bottom of any task. And you know, just have a whole log of those files that we can always go back and access if we like uh, at any point in the future. And then, of course, we can always then upload the final version right here into the checklist task if we decide to do so. So... The really nice thing again about this is that you know we can keep everything separate. We can uh, you know store information. We can collect information. We can do all of these things. Another really awesome thing that we can do here as well is that we can send emails right out of our tasks. Obviously, that's a very common thing that people have to do in your process these days. And what you can do here is that you know say your emails when you're going to run this process are 95% the same. It doesn't even matter if it's 95% the same, but let's just say it's mostly the same every single time that you send it. The only thing that's changing is maybe the email address of the person that you're sending it to, the name of the person that you're sending the email to, maybe any other information about when the, you know, you're actually going to have a meeting with them, maybe specifics of you know, your deal with them, any of that information, all that stuff that might change, that's okay too. Now, everything else though is all pretty much the same. And there's no point in having to write that over and over and over again. So that's where the send email widget comes in here inside of process tree. This is one of two ways to send emails. We'll get into the second one, but this one uh, right inside of here, inside of process tree allows you to pre-write an email. So essentially it's a form email. You can write it, all of it. Uh, you know, the same stuff that you would just have to write over and over again. You just write it once. 
And then you can use what's called variables to pull in information from your form fields right here into this send email widget. So that way, when I click send, it will automatically open up that email right in whatever it is that you use to send your emails. For example, if you use Gmail, if you use Outlook, anything like that, it'll automatically open it up right here with everything already filled out. You can format it here if you want to. You can attach stuff if you want to, or you can just click send. And it'll automatically send that email right to that person. But again, you don't have to write anything at all. All that information is already there. You already, can, already collected it once. You type it once, and it's in those form fields. It gets pushed into the send email widget right where you want it. And then you're just sending that email exactly as it needs to be done without additional effort. All right, let me just go ahead and navigate right back here in a process street. Cool, so once you're, got, once you're done with your checklist, of course you can complete it right over here, or you just can check off all the tasks. That works too. Now the nice thing about, uh, you know, about completing your checklist, and this happens randomly, although I have a secret for being able to force it, is that you often get confetti, and that's always a nice, uh, exciting little thing. And of course, like I said, it is random, so you never know when that's gonna happen. That's not every single time. But again, I have a way to secretly force that, so there you go. All right, so the really nice thing about being able to keep everything separate in here, right, you know, you're running lots and lots and lots of, of say, lots and lots of onboarding processes for lots of clients all at once. Uh, that's where you want to be running a lot of checklists because, of course, then you can have specific information for one client and, and other information for a different client. And that way you're able to keep it straight, you know, where you are with one as opposed to another one, sending the emails to the right people, doing all that sort of a thing, seeing who completed what, when, who didn't complete what, and when it should have been completed by. All that information can be held separate and yet equally important using checklists. Really great way to be able to see all of that information. If we go right here to overview, so it's next to template right here in overview. Let me move this menu out of the way. This right here, let me actually just pull up only the ones that we care about right here, active checklists. So there's three statuses of, of checklists here. There's active, completed, and archived. Active means, hey, I just ran it. I'm actively working on it. Completed means I'm done. It's just what I did right there with that Apple checklist that you saw. I went through, I completed it. We don't need to keep working on it. Don't need to keep looking at it. It's done. And archived is just kind of like, well, we started working on it. Maybe that client needed to take a break, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, maybe it was just a hypothetical thing. And we might go back to it. We might, we might need to, you know, retain that information, go right back in there and keep working on it. But we don't want to keep it, you know, laying around if we're not going to actively work on it. Well, that's an archived checklist. Either way, all three of those different statuses you can pull up here, either one of them, two of them, three of them, all at, all at the same time, whatever you like, any combination, you pull them up right here inside of the template overview tab. And that allows you to get a really great high level view over every single bit of information inside of your, uh, inside of your template, and specifically inside of all the checklists that you run off of that template. So these would be all of the clients that we are actively onboarding. Of course, if you were just looking at this, you know, you just had a paper SOP that you had to keep track of all this with, it would be nearly impossible. How are you going to keep track of all these people if you just got one page and you got to keep all this information in your head? It's not going to happen. This is where you definitely want to have checklists and you can just look right here and say, okay, we're working on Disney, Intel, Capital One, Google, Oracle, Amazon, Tesla, and Microsoft all at the same time. We are very... Uh, <laughs> We're definitely in above our heads here, I guess, but that's all right. Uh, Process Street will help us uh, keep it straight. And we can see what the due dates are for each of those. We can go ahead and, and see what package options they each selected, see how far along we are this way. But we can also go down here and see specifically for each of the different tasks. A lot of these are hidden in these checklists because we don't need them because of that conditional logic. These ones are not, though. We can see, okay, these are the ones that are completed, not completed. So checked off means completed, not checked off means not completed, still being worked on. Any other information that we have inside of these form fields as well, for example, their names, anything like that, will also all show up right here. The nice thing about this too is that we can customize this however we want. We can drag things around. We can change the size of things. We can uh, realistically do whatever we want here in terms of hiding and showing things as well. And if we really want, we can also export this entire table of data uh, to a CSV, and this exports literally everything, all of the checklists that we have. Of course, you can sort it to whatever way that you want uh, inside of that spreadsheet. Uh, this will have all the other data as well in terms of who completed what when, uh, so that could be pretty handy, and that's export to CSV right here. 
Now, let's just say, for example, that you have a ton of processes going on, right? You have, you know, six different templates you got built. Maybe you got a lot more than that, of course. Uh, each of those, you've got 20 checklists running. So there's 20 little checklists inside of your organization. And maybe you're assigned to, say, 10 to 15 of those. And maybe on some of those, you're assigned to multiple tasks. On some other ones, you're not assigned to the checklist, but you're assigned to two tasks. Of course, all of this information, you know, this could get kind of, uh, kind of confusing because otherwise, you know, you might be looking inside of your email inbox and going, what's going on here? What's all the stuff that I need to get done? Well, luckily for you, Process Street built the inbox feature that's right here next to home. Now, right now, everybody that's listening, this is what I recommend. Go right here, take this, right? If you're on, if you're on Chrome, I think it's uh, or Command D or Command B. Command D. There we go. Command D. Go ahead and bookmark that. Make that your bookmark. Make that where you go right here. I'm going to go ahead and hide my bookmark bar while I'm at it, but go ahead and bookmark that. Make this where you go when you come into Process Street because this is where all of your assigned tasks and checklists end up from the entire organization, everywhere, all at once. If it's assigned to you, it's going to be right here inside of your inbox by default right here. And it's going to be sorted if you're using due dates as well. It's going to be sorted by the due date. So things that are most overdue. So for example, December 6th, well, that's a long time ago. That's going to be right here at the top. I really need to work on this. The thing is going down here for September 17th. Well, that's, that's two days ago. That's not as far, right? We don't need to work on that as soon as the thing that was on December 6th. So what we can do here is that we can go through and uh, you know, keep track of what needs to get done uh, and prioritize it very, very quickly. Things that have no due date go right down here at the bottom. We still need to work on them, but just don't need to do them by a particular day. And things that are upcoming, uh, if you have any, so things where you have a due date that hasn't come up yet, those go into upcoming. Say that you're managing other people and you want to see things that are assigned to others. Well, you go right here to assign to me and you can filter through all of the different other people inside of your organization. And you can see what's, what are they working on? What's going on? What's Dana working on? What's overdue for her? Nice thing about this too, is that anything that you can do inside of that task or checklist inside of Process Street, well, guess what? You can do it right here inside of Inbox. You don't even need to go into the actual checklist or that actual task. You can do it all right here. You can say, what's that headline going to be? Boom goes the dynamite. That's a really weird post headline, but that's okay. So this is what you can do here is that you can uh, fill out form fields, you can write comments, you can attach things, you can set due dates, you can snooze things, you can unassign people, reassign somebody else. You can also complete it. There you go. And as you do that, it keeps moving through the next thing. This is actually an entire checklist and here's the only thing that needs to be done. Boom. I was wrong, there's more, but that's because it's, it's not showing because of conditional logic. We can keep going through here and just check all this stuff off or decide not to. It's addicting once you start. Anyways, what you can do here is that you can actually complete the entire checklist just like this. Okay, I have one more task. There we go, now it's done. All right, so that's what you can do here is you can do everything that you would do inside of the checklist or the task itself right here inside of Inbox. You can filter through stuff this way, makes things so much faster, so much easier. You don't have to go hunting for what you're supposed to be working on. It's all right here. Of course, if you do want to go into any of those things, you can get, click these links here to get to them as well. You can also search for stuff if you like. And again, this is where you can, you can check to see what everyone, what everyone else is working on. What you're working on is always going to be the default, just like that. Now, uh, the one more thing that I want to touch on before we get into our, our mid-session break here is the idea that if you have a process that you are working on, uh, that you do say every month, every week, every day, every year, whatever it might be. It's on a regular interval. If you have a process like that, which you most definitely do, taxes, for example, uh, financial accounting, whatever it might be, uh, what you're going to want to do with that particular process is you're going to want to schedule it. And that's right here. You can also do that from any template itself. You can go right into its menu, clicking on that little button, click more, and then you can schedule it just like that. Or you can just click right here where it says scheduled, see all the currently scheduled checklists that you have. Or you can, of course, schedule another one, uh, whatever you like. That'll take you into the same view. Let me actually take you this way to one that 
uh, we want to actually show you. So say we're going into marketing here, we're doing a, a blog every single month and we want to make sure that we don't forget to do it. We'll go ahead and click schedule checklist. Now this is where, this is that screen it'll take you to same way, no matter how you get there, it'll take you to the same place. Right here, you've got the, uh, the, you know, the template that you want to run that checklist off of. You've got the name and you can customize this however you want. Maybe we don't really care about the time that it's run. We just care about the date. That's fine. We'll just do that now. We'll just say whatever the, the, the name of it is and then the date. We can assign somebody to it. You can also have it assigned you automatically. And that way, uh, when this gets run via the schedule, you will automatically get assigned which means you'll automatically get that notification in your email and it'll automatically show up in your process street inbox. Uh, so, you know, you'll never have to forget about it or, or worry about trying to do it. It'll automatically just show up right there. You'll never have to think about it again. You just have to work on it. That's it. And you can of course set that to whatever interval you like. You can even set that to just be preset for some specific date in the future. Just once that's okay too. It's still a schedule. But of course, if you have something where it's going to be yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, et cetera, you can do that. Now say you want it to be only on weekdays, that's fine, you do weekly and choose each of those weekdays. I had said monthly here, so we'll say monthly. And with any of these intervals, it doesn't have to be one month, it could be two months, three months, four months, uh, you know, make it quarterly, make it uh, semi-annual, whatever it might be, you can do that in here, you just, you know, just change this. You can also repeat it by the day of the month, the day of the week. So the first Monday of the month, the first day of the month, you got a lot of those options here, just whatever you like. Of course, everything inside of here, inside of Process Street is highly customizable. You choose when you want that first date. So we'll say the first of the month and we'll say by the day of the month. So on day one of the month, it'll always run. And you can even set it to automatically have a due date, say maybe 10 days after. We want it to automatically be due 10 days after. There we go. So that way it's going to run on the on October 1st to start and then, you know, uh, November 1st, December 1st, January 1st, et cetera. Uh, when it runs, I'll automatically get an email to show up in my inbox. Let me know that I'm assigned to it. And of course I can assign other people as well. And then right here, if I don't work on it within 10 days, I don't complete it within 10 days. I'm going to receive a second email, a second notification, letting me know, Hey, it's overdue. You got to work on this. And that's it. You just schedule it and then you're good to go. I've already scheduled this before, so I don't really need another set of notifications. All righty. So uh, in the second half uh, or second, I don't know, third of this uh, broadcast, what we're going to be going through is actually building your templates, uh, putting in content, putting in form fields, all those sorts of things using some of our pre-made templates. And then we'll get into just a little bit of automation. So definitely stick around for that. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is take a a uh, quick second to read through some of your questions. Please feel free at this moment to go ahead and submit some more. You can, of course, submit them at any time. But if you feel have any, if you have any pressing that you really want answered at this moment, go ahead and submit them. I will do another uh, break for questions at the end. Uh, but if you have any questions up to this point you want answered, feel free. Go ahead and submit them, or just things that you specifically want covered. Uh, if I can fit them in, I will. So go ahead and put those in. I'm going to mute myself, read through some of your stuff, and start answering. All right, so I have two questions here so far. Uh, first question here from Patty. How can we integrate with Asana? Can we see all the checklist tasks in Asana? So uh, you can integrate with Asana, no problem. Uh, what you would likely do in that case is, uh, you know, essentially you're gonna use what's called Zapier. We'll get into that in a moment, but Process Street integrates with 1,100 different services, Asana included. Using Zapier, Zapier is a tool that connects different digital services together. Uh, and pretty much what you could do is you can make it so that when you check off a particular task or run a particular checklist, that it automatically creates a set of tasks inside of Asana. And you would just preset what you want those tasks to be. Or you can also pass that information from inside Process Streets to say you had a form field where you uh, listed the tasks that you wanted to be pushed into Asana. And then uh, essentially you check that task off, that data gets pushed into Zapier, which holds that information, says, okay, now I got it. Now I'm gonna do as you say, I'm gonna pass that right into Asana and put, may, turn these into Asana tasks. Uh, it's highly customizable there as well, so you can do lots of things. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit, but that is how you would integrate Asana. All right, so I have a couple more questions here. Uh, so from Kaylee, sorry if I'm not saying your name right, or Callie. Uh, you can let me know which one of those is right. Uh, you said here, with the email component, is your system HIPAA compliant? 
Uh, Process Street at this moment is not HIPAA compliant. I will tell you that right now. Uh, a lot of medical services, hospitals, healthcare providers, et cetera, do, however, still use Process Street. All they do is they don't put in specific patient identifiable data. Um, it is highly secure, so it's just a hair short of being HIPAA compliant. Uh, I actually forget what the specific thing is that makes it not HIPAA compliant, uh, but it's it, it's something silly. I don't quite remember. But anyways, the whole point here is that a lot of healthcare providers still use us for everything else that doesn't require uh, putting in identifiable patient information. But I mean, literally everything in terms of your operations, your administration, uh, how the office runs, how the finances are handled. I mean, literally everything else, all of that perfectly great place, perfectly great use for Process Street there. Now I have another question here from you. Uh, where can I get a full list of the programs that you integrate with? So uh, I'll get into that in just a bit as well. But the short answer to that is Zapier. Everything that we integrate with is through Zapier. So whatever integrates with Zapier, that's Z-A-P-I-E-R, uh, therefore integrates with Process Street. That's actually over 1,100 different things at this point. I'll show you where to find that list inside of uh, Zapier. It's pretty much just their list of apps that they integrate with means it integrates with Process Street. Uh, Carla, let's see here. Carla asks, can you elaborate on subtasks? Can I add images for each subtask within a task? Uh, I will elaborate on subtasks as I go into building out the template. Uh, the short answer is you can't add an image into a subtask. A subtask is specifically just, uh, you know, really just purely a listing of, of tasks that you want to have just very basic, very straightforward. You don't want to add anything else to it. If you want to add images to something uh, or any other sort of content, you want to just go ahead and make that item a task. And of course, you can fill that out with whatever you want. But a subtask is kind of the most basic level of a task. Uh, so Brian here said, our company has about eight employees that I'd like to implement a checklist process for. I would also like to use Process Street to create a new SOP manual for our company. If some of our employees have a guest level membership, what exactly can they do? So something that I have not touched on yet, uh, and I was going to touch on it in a moment, but I will touch on it right now, is the concept of members versus guests. So inside of Process Street, there are three different levels of users. I like to use that word so I don't use any of the other ones that I just said there to confuse people. Uh, the three different types of users, and if we go right here into the organization settings by clicking on the organization name, right here inside of the members and guests tab, what you'll see are the three levels of users. That is admins, members, and guests. So the way that this works, uh, a member, we'll start at that level, kind of the mid-level there. A member is somebody that you're paying for to be inside of Process Street. They're the ones that you're having licenses for. And the way that a member works is that uh, essentially they have the ability uh, to edit templates, to create templates, to create things, and to automatically be assigned to stuff. Um, you know, re realistically, uh, you know, you can decide not to give people member permissions, uh, rather rather not to give certain members permissions to edit things everywhere. You don't have to do that. The whole point of members is that you really have a lot of control over their permissions. So in some places you can highly limit them. They can just run a checklist. Uh, they can just look at their own checklist. They can't edit any templates. They can't do any of that stuff. They can just, you know, work on the things that they're specifically assigned to and nothing else, but maybe in a different folder, maybe it's their own folder, for example, they, are, they have the ability to create whatever templates that they want. They can edit things and create subfolders. They can do all that stuff. They have a lot of control in there. Uh, and, and realistically, you can really set those permissions granularly uh, for specific locations inside of your Process Street organization, and that is for members. Now, an admin is just a special privilege of a member. That's why they're still listed here as a member. They're still members. You're still paying for them. And the only real difference there right here is that they're just they have a little check mark under the admin, uh, little admin uh, tab here. And uh, what that just means is that they have special privileges above a member where they're able to not only, you know, uh, edit things and, you know, in certain places, but an admin can edit things literally everywhere at all times. So they can edit any folders, any templates. They can see all checklists. There's no restricting any of that for an admin. They can also edit the organization settings. So this tab that you're seeing right here, only admins can really see and edit any of this stuff in terms of adding in new members, adding in new guests, changing those levels, uh, you know, changing the settings, anything of that nature, creating new groups, all that stuff, and including also all of the billing information as well. So only admins can control that stuff. And you can have as many or as, as few as you want. You need to have at least one 
but realistically, uh, you know, you realistically want to keep those controlled. Now, on the flip side, the lowest level of user is that of a guest. A guest is somebody where uh, essentially they are only able to see the specific checklists that are assigned to them. So on a particular template, say for the client onboarding template, we've got 30 checklists running, 30 clients that we're onboarding. Uh, and we have a, an, you know, an administrative assistant that we have as a guest inside of here, or maybe a virtual assistant that we have as a guest in here. And you know, we want them to help out with a portion of you know, one or two of those checklists. Uh, it, what's going to happen is that we're going to assign that person, uh, that guest, to w whatever those checklists that we want them to run. Let's just say there's two of them. In which case, even though there's 30 checklists total running underneath that template, they're only going to see those two that they're assigned to. There's no way for them to see the other 28. Uh, and, and realistically, they're going to be able to come in here. They can run that checklist. Once they're done, though, that's it. Uh, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to be creating any new templates. They're not going to be editing the template any of that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, I had to come in and specifically say, hey, you're assigned to this task, you're assigned to this checklist, uh, you know, this, you know, as a guest, uh, you know, realistically, if I wanted them to automatically be assigned, I would want to make them a member. Okay, so last question before I move on to uh, the editing templates here, uh, again, from Patty, thank you, Patty, how can we change a member to a guest? So to change a member back down to a guest, you just click this down arrow right here. That will demote them right down to a guest. Uh, if you want to turn them into an admin, you just check this box right here. If you want to remove somebody from the organization overall, you just click this X right here. Now, alternatively, if you want to turn a guest into a member, just click the up arrow to promote them to a member. Or of course, you can click an X to remove them overall. All righty. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go right on into building out templates. Now, uh, again, if you have more questions, feel free to sub keep submitting them in. Uh, totally cool. Just go ahead and you know, put them in and I will get to them right towards the end. So as you think of things, as you hear things that are maybe a bit confusing, feel free to submit them and I'll try to get through them all before the end of this. All right. Now, uh, moving through here. Uh, now, first thing, when you're going to be creating a template, so creating a new process right inside of here, inside of Process Street, you have a couple options. And there's one that I will highly recommend that you try out first. So right here, if you click on new, you got new blank template and new pre-made template. When you're going to be coming in here to create a new process, or even if you don't have a specific one in mind and you're just trying this out, try out our pre-made templates first. Don't go trying to do a blank template first. Uh, you know, it's, it's still very easy, but a pre-made template is going to at least give you a really great idea of how to use Process Street. And if it is a process that you are actually trying to build or very similar to a process that you're trying to build, you can change that template around however you like so that it fits your needs. So we click on new pre-made template. These are just featured ones. A lot of people come in here and go, well, you only got like seven of them. Wrong. You got about 150 of them. All different categories, about 29 different categories here. Heck, you're building a drone. That's cool. We can go on in here and do a drone repair. That's all right. You're doing anything in here, whether it be construction, whether it be customer support, whether it be education, investing in companies. I mean, almost literally everything. You're creating podcasts, all that stuff, all inside of here as you need them. Uh, you know, let's just go ahead and grab one. You know, let's go ahead and do drone repair. So say you're going to be doing some drone repair and you'd like, uh, you know, just uh, essentially a, a checklist for that. And you're like, I don't even know where to start We're on that. That's okay. You click customize, it'll bring it right into your organization. You can change the name of that template to whatever you want. You can also do that in the future. You don't have to do it right now if you're not sure, that's fine. You click okay, or you just click the enter key like I just did. That'll take you right on into here. And this, of course, is a pre-built, pre-written template. And just because it's pre-made does not mean that you can't edit it. You can do anything you want to this. Whole point is to help get you started. So maybe you don't even have a drone. Maybe you've just got an RC car, an RC plane, I don't know, whatever you got. But maybe you've just got something that you need to repair that's something like a drone or anything else, doesn't really matter. Whole point here is that if you grab this template rather than having to start from scratch, you can come on in here and automatically have stuff already written for you, already done for you, uh, rather than having to go creating all of it from scratch. Now, the way that you edit all of this stuff, once you've pulled a template into here, you go ahead and open up this menu. You click on edit this template, pretty straightforward. So 
I'm going to go ahead and use this one to just show you how to build a template just because it's already got a lot of the stuff in here. If you're starting with a blank template, the same stuff applies. Only difference is that, of course, you're pulling the stuff in, which I'll show you how to do, uh, rather than just kind of modifying the stuff that's already here. But I always find this to be a little bit easier to, 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 you know, to see things. So uh, when you are building out your template, of course, the first thing that you're going to be starting with on the left-hand side here are your tasks and headers. Especially if you're starting off blank, I highly recommend that you just close this little widget thing on the right-hand side of this widget menu. You close that, get rid of it. Don't even get distracted by it. Keep everything on the left-hand side here. Just stay on the left-hand side. Don't fill this out with a whole bunch of pretty stuff. Don't let this confuse you. Just go ahead and stay right here. Build out all of your tasks first. Same thing as if you're creating a checklist. Uh, you know, you're writing it on a piece of paper, whatever you're going to do, you're not going to start putting in all the information regarding each of those tasks as you're writing it out. No, you're going to write all of the overarching tasks first. Do that in here as well. You want to go ahead and just write out every single task as in just the, just this, not everything here, just this, just write, you know, okay, record basic details, done, declare repairs needed, done, gather tools, need, check, check spare components, done, just write that. That's it. And if you want to put a divider, if you want to break this down into preparation, safety, repair, et cetera, you just go ahead and take uh, whatever you're writing, just put a colon at the end of it. That turns it right into a header. Or remove it to turn it right back into a task. Headers are going to be things that you do not check off. They're not things you're going to be you know, completing. It's not a task. The whole point is just to divide things. You can still put stuff in there just like we did here, but it's not something that you need to get done. This is just more or less information. Inside of your task, that's where you're going to want to, you know, if you want, you can eventually put stuff inside of here, all different bits of content. But before you do that, as you're writing out your tasks and your headers, what you're going to want to do is just you type it. Say you go, okay, well, actually, there's something that needs to go between recording the basic details and declaring the repairs needed. Hit enter, just like that. Adds in a blank task. You can also click right down here to add in a blank task or right here to add in a heading. That's right down here in the bottom left-hand side. This is the task menu. You also delete things if we don't need them. And if it's the blank task like this, you can just hit backspace and it'll delete it as well. Say there's a lot of information here that you really like. So you like all these form fields, you like all this stuff. There's maybe like a task that is very similar to this that maybe you're using conditional logic you wanted to show in only other situations or you need to do some stuff that's similar to this, you gotta do it twice. That's okay, hit duplicate. It'll duplicate not only the task name but everything inside of it as well. If you don't need it, go ahead and delete it. That's fine. If you need to do a whole bunch of stuff, do a whole bunch of tasks at once. Same thing as if you're using any files on your computer, select the top one, go all the way down to the bottom here, hold shift or press shift, I guess hold shift really, hold shift, press that bottom one. Now you've got all of your tasks selected and you can do assignments for all of these all at once. You can remove assignments all at once, I'm clicking this little button right there. You can add a stop task to all of them all at once. You can remove stop tasks if you like. You can move them up and down. You can delete all of them. All this stuff you can do just like that. If they're not in order, you just hold command if you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC, select them just like that. There we go. So that's how you work with tasks and headers. Uh, like I said, start with those first. Don't go into all the other content uh, until you've got all of that stuff done. In fact, I'd recommend you build that out. You click save changes that's gonna automatically push your changes live into the actual template and therefore also into any checklist that you're going to run moving forward. You'll also be given the option if you have run a checklist already to update the existing ones as well. And that's up to you, you don't have to, but you can. Uh, you can also update them at any time in the future as well. If you decide you don't wanna save your changes that you just made, that's okay as well. You can click discard changes and it'll just push them away and just revert it back to that old version. So what I recommend again is putting out those tasks, click save changes, and then go ahead and run a checklist off of it. Go ahead and actually use it. Cause very often as you're creating a template, you think you know everything that you need to be doing, but you don't really know until you need to actually use it. Uh, don't go putting in a massive amount of content before you go trying to run it. Because realistically, you're gonna spend a lot of time building out that content, trying to get it perfect and beautiful, which it never will be. Uh, but then you're gonna go deleting that task cause you don't actually need it. Or you're gonna add in three other tasks. You gotta change everything up. Get it right first, at least get it relatively right first, and then you can go ahead and fill it with content. So that content right here on the right-hand side, you've got text, image, video, file, subtask, send email widgets, and form fields. We talked about these already before. 
any of these items, you can just drag and drop wherever you want, just like this, drag and drop builder, really, really useful. You can delete the things if you don't need them. Text, you've got all your standard stuff, bold, italicize, underline. You can do everything you want here that you would typically do in a word processor. So I can actually do command B, although that's bolded. Now it's italicized, now it's underlined, now it's none of those things. Actually, it's one of those things. There we go, now it's none of those things. You can take that stuff, you can put it uh, right to the center if you want, to the right-hand side, you can put a line break if you want in between things to make it nice and clear. We can put important things inside of these colored bubbles here, just like this. That's nice and clear, there we go. You can resize, you can put links in using this link builder right here, you put the URL, put a nice pretty text that you want, click here to go to wherever you want, and then you can uh, redirect people to it or open it up in a new window. Use bullet points, number lists, uh, all of these different options. You can also pull in those variables using this little button right here. So any information that's submitted into any form fields, technician's first name, you wanna pull it into this text field, you know, welcome technician first name to you know, the, the company, whatever it might be. Use that variable to pull in technician first name. It'll automatically pull it in for you, nice and easy. Next up here, you've also got the images. And you can either pull that in just like this and upload it that way. Or what I really like is that if you were to search as something like a pictures of puppies, which have nothing to do with drones, but it does not matter. We'll go ahead and copy that image. Go right back here. Press Command V if you're on a Mac, Control V if you're on a PC. There it is, just like that. You can also drag and drop them from your file window on your computer. That'll save you a lot of time rather than having to upload and save them and then upload them. Just copy that image and paste it right in there. Videos, whether that works, you grab a YouTube Vimeo or YouTube Vimeo or Wistia URL, put it right here, it'll automatically embed it. Or if you've got it on your computer, you can go ahead and upload it. Files, you can upload them that way. Or again, you can drag and drop them from your file browser on your computer. Just grab it, pull it right here, put it right into this little tab. You don't have to even have that. It can just be just like this. It'll automatically go, hey, that's a file. It'll upload it for you. It'll always be available for anybody running those checklists. Now, really, really great thing here. You already mentioned it. You already asked about it, which is the subtasks. So say, for example, we're going to be gathering tools. Sure, we could say gather the nut driver, gather the Phillips screwdriver, gather the slotted screwdriver as individual tasks. But why would we? That's way too much. We don't need all that. We don't need, what is that, six different tasks you know, to gather tools. Instead of that, let's go ahead and just put all of those right here into this task, this overarching task of gathering tools. We'll break it down into which tools. We can make it required to make sure that you grab all of them and not just some of them. You can also make it optional if you just need to grab a few. Now that's right here. You can't add anything additional in here. If you do need to add additional stuff in here, for example, if I needed to somehow tell people what a pliers look like, you could put an image right here into this overarching task, that's one way to do it. Or if you really care and you gotta put a lot more information into it, you can actually just say gather tools and then gather pliers as a second, as an as a individual task and then put in you know, specific information about which pliers, where are they, what do they look like, et cetera, using images, using videos, whatever else you need. Uh, but if you wanna break it down like that much, you just wanna put it into its own task. Now that send email widget, I imagine we probably don't already have one in here. That's okay, we'll go ahead and pull it in. Send email widget, that's where you can pull, you can automatically have those emails pre-written. Right here, say we've got you know, the current user's email, we've got you know, somebody's first name, last name, we could say dear current user first name or technician first name. There we go, it's gonna say dear and if his name's Tom, it's gonna be Tom, if it's Jane, it's gonna be Jane. Whatever it's gonna be, it'll automatically pull it in there for you. Subject line, you can have it automatically be something that you uh, you know, that, that you want. So it can just be, you know, a static set of words, or you can pull in their first name here as well. Find that that always helps with people opening emails. Hey, it's my first name. How do they know my name? There you go, just like that. And of course, you can have that email address be whatever you like as well. If you write, if you type it in, whatever you type in inside of here will always be the same between checklists. Any variables that you use will be different. They're variable. That's how it works. And of course, once you click send, it'll automatically pre-write that, open it up, whatever you use to send your emails automatically. I'll go ahead and delete that. I don't really need this. There we go. Finally, of course, you have your form fields and you've got lots and lots of different types. You've got short text for things like a name, something that's very, very short. 
Maybe you've got something that requires additional information or just a, you know, a lot of notes that you might write in that box. Might need to be short, long, whatever it might be. You don't need to go expanding it here because it will automatically expand as you type in here. So you can type entire paragraphs, essays, et cetera. That's a long text just like that. Email and website. Those are two different form fields, very similar to short text, about the same length. Only difference here is that email and website are going to verify that it's actually an email address or that it's actually a website address. It's not going to verify that the email address or the website address works. It's just going to make sure that it looks like one. Of course, you've also got the file upload somewhere for someone to uh, somewhere for someone to upload a completed file, uh, you know, just a document, whatever it might be. Always really handy, and that document will always live right here inside of the checklist. You can also pass that along to other places using Zapier, and we'll get into that in just a second. You've got a date field allows people to select any sort of dates that they need. There's a little calendar that'll pop up, dates and times as well. You got drop down and multi choice, both very similar. Only difference here is that a drop down is you're choosing one of the options. And of course you can add in more by pressing the enter key and remove them by pressing the backspace key. And that's the uh, drop down. Multi-choice is what it sounds like here. Multiple options can be selected. So it can be just A or it can be A and B or A and B and C, et cetera. Uh, finally, you can also use a hidden field. That's really useful if you are trying to pass data through your checklist. Say you've got a checklist being created using Zapier automatically, you know, uh, you get a new lead that comes into your CRM. Therefore, uh, you want a checklist run for them for your sales guys to come in and qualify them. So it automatically gets run. You can pass that data from Zapier, from Salesforce, for example, through Zapier and into your checklist. And you don't want, you know, all that data to have to be read by the, by the person who's actually doing the qualifications. That's okay. You can just pass all that data in. That's unnecessary for them to read, but you still like to have hold of. Pass them right into, an, into a hidden field. Uh, and then you can pass that on to somewhere else, either through Zapier or Process Street itself. All right. Uh, the other things you can do in here, of course, you can set assignments. If you're always having somebody work on the same task, so say it's always Ben that's going to be working on this task. He's always recording the details for drone repair. It's not going to change. It's always going to be him. Rather than having to go into every checklist every single time we run this and actually manually assign Ben to these, well, now Ben will automatically get assigned every time that this checklist gets run, no matter who runs it or how it gets run. You also preset that due date, similar to what I did in the schedule checklist. So that way it's always due after seven days from when the checklist is first run. And of course, this is where we can also add stops. We can do that as a whole if we like. Now, conditional logic, just to touch on that really quick here, you need a couple things for conditional logic. Of course, you need to be on the business pro plan for it to work. However, uh, well, if you do have that plan and you do want to use it, what you need is uh, uh, realistically uh, four things two things before you touch this button and then two things once you do. The first two things there are gonna be the tasks that you wanna show conditionally. Say for example, repair, you're not gonna repair every single thing. It might be, you know, maybe not everything is wrong with the drone, you need to repair specific things, right? Well, what you can do in that particular case is that you can say here, what repairs are needed? Chassis, propeller, motors, gimbal, indicator, lights, etc. And what you need is the tasks that are going to be conditionally shown or hidden, essentially ones that you only need in certain conditions. So what you can do here is that you just need, you know, the tasks are going to show or hide. And then you need a, a, essentially a place to indicate which condition it is, which repairs are we doing this particular time? So you just need those two things, tasks and a form field to be able to decide the situation. Once you have those two things, go on into conditional logic by clicking right up here. And so you can, some of these rules are already built in here. And essentially you need the two things here. One, you need to hide tasks by default. So any of those tasks, for example, all of the actual service repair tasks here, all of these that you do not need in every single case. You know, if you're not actually working on the chassis, you don't need to service the chassis. You don't need to see that task, there's no point. So you hide all of those by default. So when you first run this checklist, like you saw in my client onboarding, I don't need to be doing all of those tasks for every client. Uh, they're gonna be hidden by default. And then the second thing here, is that you need the actual rules, the actual conditional logic rules that will make those tasks show in the situation that it needs to show. So what repairs are required? If it has any of propellers, well, let's go ahead and show the service propellers task. Same thing goes for the rest of these LEDs, indicator lights, screws, GPS, landing frame, et cetera. It's gonna show them only when we need them and not in any other situation. That's conditional logic. 
you click save to save those rules and then that's saved right here. And then you can save your changes uh, overall to your template to push them live. There we go, we've got our drone repair uh, checklist. Now, the only other thing that I'd like to touch on before we get into our final set of questions here, I know that we've gone a bit over, that seems to happen sometimes just because there's so much to process treat. And to be honest with you, we've probably gone through without even getting into, even after we, sorry, even after we do get through automations today, uh, we've probably only gotten through, I would say maybe 50% of process street. Honestly, there's about another 50% of features that I didn't even talk about. Uh, just because there's so much stuff that it can do that we could be sitting here for two hours. Easy. I've done entire day courses on this or even actually entire week courses on this before. Uh, there's so much that it can do. Uh, realistically, I'm not going to go through everything unless you have a specific need, which is why I always ask for questions. Uh, but if you also have even more questions or you have a specific need beyond that, of course, we can always meet to go into that stuff as well. Now, automations. That's really the bread and butter of Process Street. Three different levels of use of Process Street is one, templates, so you're just using it as a place to store your documents. Two, checklists, really great way to hold people accountable and be actionable about your processes. And three, the final and what I consider the most beneficial part of Process Street is that of automation. That is where you connect Process Street to Zapier, or at the very least, you're using our send email widget or scheduling your checklists. Those two things are technically automations as well. Uh, but if you connect it to Zapier, you can then push data from, uh, from somewhere like Salesforce or your email or your calendar or I mean anything that connects to Zapier, 1,100 different things. You can push all that data right into Process Street, have it run a checklist for you, have it name that checklist for you, have it fill out all your form fields for you. You don't have to go typing in all that customer data. You already have it somewhere. Why not just push it all in and fill it out for you? And then go in the opposite direction, push that data into somewhere else. You need to you know, onboard a client, you're gonna have that initial meeting with them. You need a really great place to both figure out what steps you need to do during that onboarding, but also take notes on how it's going, what that client is looking for, et cetera. Use those form fields, fill it out, write those notes right there. You've got all the other details from their, uh, you know, from their lead page in your, your CRM or whatever else you have. Maybe it's a form that they filled out. All that information can get pushed right into that checklist that you just automatically got assigned to. You just come right on into here, go into inbox is what I always recommend. See that task, get on a call with them. You can even push their number in, for example. Uh, get on a call with them, uh, give them a call, talk to them, send them an email, et cetera. Take those notes, put it right in there, and then check that task off and automatically. Push all of those notes right back into their lead page or wherever else you want. You send it to an email, you send it an email to somebody, send a Slack message to someone, send a text message, whatever you like automatically push that data in any format that you want to anywhere that you want as long as it connects to Zapier. One really good example of that right here is my uh, hiring process checklist, which I'll go ahead and run really quick here. If we're gonna go ahead and uh, hire somebody, we're gonna say we're gonna hire, uh, let's see, Tom Brady, let's just say that his football days are over. We're gonna go ahead and take him to start working in consulting, it happens. All right, so in this case, you'd be contacting a candidate. We'll say Tom here. And it was a T Brady at gmail.com. Gonna be interviewing him for a general position. In that case, we're gonna have a general interview that pops up. There we go. And we could say, you know, if he didn't pass that interview, well, in that case, you know, we don't need to move forward. But if he does, well, in that case, what we'll do here, actually, let me use a different one. I'm gonna use a different department. Let's say we're actually, let's say we're gonna interview him for, de for development. Let's do that one instead. If he doesn't pass that interview, well, in that case, we'll send him a declined email and we'll just end that process. We don't need to keep moving forward with him. But if it does work out, well, in that case, you need to contact his references, just check him out and see what's going on. And if those don't work out, well, of course, we'll just end the process right there. That's that same task. You don't have to, use, you can reuse it for multiple things if you're using conditional logic. But if it does work out, the references check, the interview went well, et cetera. Well, in that case, and in only that case, will the employee onboarding steps show Right here, this is where you're gonna be able to pull in all the information that you need to actually contact the candidate. So of course we can, uh, you know, we can pull in all different information. I didn't actually fill these out, but if you did, you can have that right there. This is of course the send email widget, but as you're going through here, another thing you can do, another example is that you can automatically have a, uh, say a legal document that you need to have them digitally sign using something like HelloSign. You can have that template in HelloSign created. You know, it's, a, it's your typical offer letter. 
And inside of that offer letter, you've got their things like their, you know, the, the, what you're offering them in terms of the, the payment that you're going to be paying them with, uh, when their start date is, the, the terms of their, of their offer, et cetera. Uh, you can have all that information, including their name, all their address, anything like that. You just fill that out right here inside of your form fields, or you have that information automatically pull, pushed into here from anywhere else. And then you just say, okay, we want to send them an offer letter. Go ahead and check this off. What that does, you can have it set up so that Zapier then says, hey, wait a minute, this person's supposed to have an offer letter. We can do that. There we go. We can, uh, we can, we can handle that. What we'll do is we'll take all this data that you just filled out here inside of Process Street. We'll just stick that into the specific spots that you said that you want that data to go inside of HelloSign and then send that email, send that uh, document in an email automatically to that person's email address as provided here inside of the checklist. And they can go and sign that, you know, fill it out. And then you can even set it up so that when they complete it and, uh, and, 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 you know, and actually sign that document and submit it, you can have that start the next checklist, whatever you need. That can actually start your employee onboarding checklist. If you want to separate these out, you can do that too. You can create their files. You can automatically send them any sort of emails. You can create a folder for them inside of Google Drive automatically creates a folder for them, you know, automatically gives them permissions on it. You can automatically do whatever you want. You can automatically just automa uh, have it push documents, including maybe their offer letter right into that folder for you. You don't have to go having someone do it next time. You know, essentially in two seconds, you just check the thing off saying that you did it, but not only did you say that you did it, it actually gets done for you. That's really the big benefit here is that, you know, if that thing, you know, having to, you know, prepare an offer letter, uh, you know, actually having to type all that stuff up and then you got to go send it to them and you got to keep track of it. Then you got to go grab, you know, create a folder inside of Google drive. You got to get them access. You got to assign them to that, make sure that permissions are right. You got to do all those things for each person that you hire and all that stuff is probably going to take you 10, 20 minutes, et cetera. For every single person that you're going to go through and hire, say you hire 10 people this year, that is 200 to 300 minutes of time the process tree can save you because you all have to, you have to, all I have to do right here is go boom, boom, boom. I check it off. It is done. Nothing else that you need to do. All of that stuff right here. If we say, for example, confirm orientation, deliver schedule right here, we can have that automatically take all this data, send them an email. That's that second way. We can use Zapier to send emails. And inside of those emails, we can attach documents. We can format that stuff. We can make an HTML email. We can make it really pretty. However you like, we can automatically do that using Zapier instead of using just to send email widgets. You got multiple options there. And inside of, inside of Zapier, the way that that works just really quickly here is that you've got triggers and you've got actions. If you've used something like if this, then that, that's also known as IFTTT, uh, very similar concept where the trigger is the if this and the action is the then that. Essentially that just means if this thing happens, if we check off a task inside of Process Street, we can specify exactly which template that is that we are trying to check off a task from. I actually need to re, uh, reset this up and put it on to, let's use a different org here. Give me one second. I've got so many different organizations that doesn't matter. Oh, well, anyways, uh, inside of here, you can specify which specific template, which specific task. When you check that off, you want it to automatically send an email. You want this task, you can check it off to automatically send somebody a hello sign document, whatever it might be. Uh, essentially, you can automatically have that done. Essentially, use that as a trigger. So when this thing happens, then we want it to automatically send an email inside of, say, Gmail or Zapier has its own email client or Microsoft or whatever else. Whole point here is that it'll automatically send that email for you. You can also do lots and lots of other things as well. And essentially, it's just how it works. You can also go in the opposite direction where you get an email, you get a, a, a new lead in your CRM, whatever it might be. That can be the trigger and the action is create a new checklist in Process Street and automatically fill it out and assign somebody and set a due date on it. All that stuff is possible. Realistically, you've got literally billions of options because if we go right back here. Let me actually log in here. Sorry. Looks, that's, see, that's why I wasn't working. I wasn't logged in. There we go. Very nice. All right. Now that I'm in here, sorry about that. This is where you can see I've got literally that 68 different zaps inside of this one folder for me. And I've got another 10 and another. I've got a lot. I've got a lot running. Now, uh, inside of here, this is where you can see all of the apps that are connected to Process Street because they're connected to Zapier. 
You don't even have to have a Zapier account to see this. You can actually just go to zapier.com uh, slash apps and you'll see the same exact thing. This is where you can sort through and see all of the different stuff that's connected. This is not the full list. These are just their most common, most popular. You can go by alphabetical and see all of those right there. You can filter by specific categories, whatever you like as well. And again, 1,100 different apps connected to Zapier, connected then therefore to Process Street. You don't even have to connect them to Process Street. You connect them to each other. That's another benefit of that as well. So highly recommend checking that out. Uh, this isn't actually even all of them here either. It's just the top 100. But again, you can just go through, check this out, see which ones connect, see if everything that you're looking for connects. You can go ahead and just pull it up there. It gives you recommendations for ideas. A lot of the ones you might be trying to use. We may also have uh, articles pre-written, videos pre-recorded on how to set those up, how to use them and some ideas. So definitely check that out. All right. All right. Let's see what else here. What training is available and in what format? We have lots of different types of training available. It depends on your needs. So uh, I've got lots of options. Starting from, uh, starting from the most, most, most basic, uh, you know, you, of course, you've got self-help stuff. You've got this video. You've got other videos. You've got other articles, other stuff like that. So if you're somebody who likes to just do it on your own, you can do that. We've got lots of stuff for you. However, every single person who uh, upgrades to a paid plan, whether it's business, business pro, anything of that nature or enterprise, you are automatically guaranteed a uh, onboarding call with somebody here from our staff, might be me, might be somebody else from our customer success team. Uh, you can book a time, uh, depending on whatever what works for you, uh, to get on. It's usually about 30 minutes to an hour of going through um, you know, either the basics like I just did, or if you've got specific questions or specific needs or specific things that you're trying to set up, we can go through that as well in more detail. And uh, you know, if you're a smaller team, just one or two people, you're on business, that sort of a thing, um, then typically that's you know, what we can offer up, up front is that training right there. If you're a bigger team, you've got 10 people, you've got five people, you've got 25, 30, 100, whatever it might be. Obviously, one quick little session might not do it for you. Uh, typically, depending on however many people you have, we offer more and more trainings as complementary to your package. Um, we want to make sure that everybody that you have is uh, essentially has a thorough knowledge of the platform and has all questions answered. And of course, that's just by team size you know, bigger teams typically have a bigger need. Um, so if you have a bigger team, we'll give you more training. Um, but everybody, we like to make sure that you're, you have a good thorough knowledge. Uh, and then of course, another thing that we do as well, in addition to those trainings, of course, we do follow-ups and things of that nature too. Um, you know, more and more uh, people on your plan, bigger plan, for, ex for example, we, we do offer more and more of that. Uh, the, the premier plans get just a, a lot of that support anytime you need, et cetera. Uh, in addition to the initial trainings and things of that nature. Another thing that we do too, I actually just did this last week, uh, is that if you are somebody who likes to have somebody in person, uh, we, we do offer that as well. Um, you know, I do actually fly out to places to, uh, to do some of these trainings if you've got a large team that, that needs some more hands-on uh, support to get up and going. We do offer that on a case-by-case -case basis. You can always reach out and ask for that. Um, if you are on our free plan, um, at this point, you're realistically, if you want that training, you're going to need to either upgrade or just check out our help site. That All that stuff is available to literally everybody or, of course, tune into this webinar like you just did. All right, now I've got a question here from Steven. Does the guest feature enable client to handle a specific task in client onboarding? For example, I could send the client a contact info task. Uh, so yes, in the sense that if you had a client, for example, that you would like to just come in here and work on a specific item inside of your checklist, absolutely. You can assign them to that task and have them come in uh, and work on it. It gives them access to it. You don't even have to invite them into your organization first. You can automatically just click the assign button on that task and then type in their email address and it'll automatically invite them on in. Uh, now, if you're talking about limiting it so they can't see everything else, uh, in that particular case, uh, the answer is kind of no, because once you have access to a, one task on a checklist, as long as you can uh, as long as the other tasks are currently visible, then they could, in theory, go in and see the other tasks as well. It doesn't limit you to just that one task. It limits you to the checklist overall. That is something that we are investigating as a new feature in the future called task-based permissions, limiting people just to the tasks that they're specifically assigned to. But in the meantime, what you can do is you can either use stop tasks and or conditional logic to conditionally not show the other tasks that you don't want them to see until you know a specific item has been uh, entered into a form field. A lot of ways, one way that people will do that is they'll have a short text field uh, that, uh, you know, maybe you just say, you know, it's like, you know, for 
uh, employee use only. And then inside of there, you just have a password, you know, like peanut butter or something silly uh, that, you know, once you type it in, if that is set to that value inside of conditional logic, then the other tasks show, in which case they don't show otherwise. And then that way, essentially, it unlocks the rest of it for the actual staff member. That's a good way that people do it. But of course, we're building a feature to be able to handle, handle it a little bit more easily. All right. So let's see here. Would you say to select all the task lists in a keystroke to modify them all at once? Uh, so the way that this works here is that if you wanted to select all of them top to bottom uh, and they're all sequential, hold shift. Hold, uh, select the top one, hold shift, select the bottom one, and it'll select them all at once. If you're trying to select a bunch of them and they're not sequential, just hold command if you're on a Mac and control if you're on a PC and uh, just select the ones that you want that way. Same way that selecting files on your computers works. Let's see here. We have a checklist created that our agency uses, but I am looking for a way to make it digital and also be able to see where employees are at on any given day. Do you get any individual appointment for some time to review the checklist and see how I would input them before I start working on it? Yeah, so if, you are, uh, if you're on one of our paid plans, uh, then just reach out to our support and we're definitely super happy to get on and review your guys' checklist, see if we can help out. Uh, you know, help you guys implement that, do anything that you guys need. Um, unfortunately, if you guys are on our free plan at the moment, we can't offer any sort of uh, consultative calls just because that is specifically a benefit that our, our paid members do get. Um, but realistically, if you, if you have that, feel free uh, to, to reach out to, to us and we can maybe provide some suggestions through support. Uh, but if you want us to really take a deep dive, that's part of our onboarding. That's part of what we do. Uh, do reach out and, and or upgrade, and then we can automatically get in there and, and help you with it. Let's see here. And that also means if you have like an existing document that's not inside a process tree yet, that's part of that too. Like we'll, you know, you can show us a PDF and we'll, you know, as if you guys upgrade, we'll, you, know, you can show us a PDF and we'll go through that as well to, to make, provide some recommendations. We also like to try and optimize your processes too, in addition to just putting them in. So that's another part of that service that we do as well. All right, so Brian said, you may have mentioned this, but where does the information entered into a fillable form go? Does process tree create a PDF? And can we set it up to import the enter data into a company made PDF template? So there's a couple questions there. First off, uh, any information that you submit into process street. Uh, so by default, that information stays here inside of process street and it stays there forever, unless you decide to delete the checklist, which I recommend that you don't. But for example, client onboarding, Looking at this, you can look at that data right here inside of the template overview tab, or you can go right here into a specific uh, checklist and you can see any of that information that was ever submitted into any of those fields right here, just like that. It'll always live there. Uh, it doesn't go anywhere, won't do anything with it. Uh, but if you wanted to pass that data somewhere else, well, in that case, that's where you wanna use Zapier. And that's where you can say, you know, okay, now that we filled this form field out and we checked off this task, which wasn't completed, there we go. That doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter. Uh, then you can make it so that this data gets pushed into a Google Sheet or into a database or sent anywhere. And of course you did ask about a PDF. Uh, so what I would recommend in that particular case is that you have two options. Uh, if you're trying to create a PDF uh, where you just wanna push that data into it, uh, that's where you're going to wanna to use Zapier with a tool called WebMerge, W-E-B-M-E-R-G-E. Uh, and that just allows you to create a fillable PDF, you know, essentially with a, uh, you know, with a couple spaces where data is going to get pushed in into a, into a template. Uh, I will say that that, that is a paid service as well. Um, so when you're working with PDFs, they're pretty finicky in the sense that, you know, they are like a locked down file. So WebMerge has kind of uh, got a hold on that. So you do have to pay. But if you really care about it, that is one way that you can do it. The other way that you can do it is you could also use uh, Google Docs where essentially you put, pass the data out of Process Street, have it automatically, you know, through Zapier, create a new Google Doc file, and you can either keep it as that, and or be when you ap after you do that, you can have it automatically then save it as type PDF. Um, I will say that when you do that though, uh, the formatting can be a little funkier in terms of if you have like a very, very specific format of your PDF, which case you do want to use WebMerge, uh, Google Docs, uh, Anyways, if you do have more questions about this, do feel free to reach out. Um, or if you guys are you know, on a paid plan, we can also meet, go through a meeting and I can explain this in greater detail just for you. Ah, 
I see that you just, well, you, okay, I didn't read the next question, which was, I just realized that you could just attach the company made PDF to the checklist. Yes, you could. You can also just do that. You can, of course, upload that, uh, you know, the blank version to the template and then have a filled out version right there on the checklist as well, if you like. Uh, one thing that I will mention too, is that for any checklist or for any template, you can print them out. So if we, say, if we say print this checklist, that'll bring you to a printable version of that checklist that you can then save as a PDF. See right there, that's my default. You can also just print it out if you like. And the whole point is that it's actually a filled out version of that checklist. Same thing that you're seeing here. It also has data about who did what when right here. So there's my comment. Who is this assigned to? When was this thing filled out? When was it checked off? All of those activity notes, anything like that. All that information, for example, like this one right there, that all goes into that as well. That's pretty handy. You can upload that wherever you want to. Same thing goes for the template. You can print those out. Of course, it won't be filled out because it's just a template, but you can print those too as well to a PDF. And looks like my last question here uh, is, will you encrypt social security numbers? Uh, so everything inside of Process Street is encrypted in the sense that uh, all of our data is stored inside, inside of Amazon S3. Um, so in between Process Street, getting passed then into our databases in Amazon, uh, stored securely in a couple of different databases. We can secure it here in the United States uh, is where the data goes. So we are, if you are in the EU, we are a uh, data handler. Um, so pretty much a uh, data processor rather. Um, so that data uh, is encrypted as it goes there uh, and, and stored incredibly securely, about as securely as the most secure things on the internet. Uh, so the answer is yes in that regard, but specifically a social security number as in like just that, nothing else, or maybe another level of security in terms of encryption, then no. But do people do put that information into Process Street uh, every single day and have no issues and are, are very happy with that level of encryption. Um, like I said before, we are not HIPAA compliant specifically. So if you're looking to put in patient data, the answer to that is no. Um, but again, for anything else you could be doing, uh, any other data, any other information, including sensitive data, Process Tree can, can, uh, can take care of it for you, no problem. Well, I don't see any other new questions. That's quite all right. In that case, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the conclusion of this webinar. Only, uh, it was only an hour and a half as opposed to my 45 minutes or an hour, as I said, but I hope this was thorough and helpful. Uh, realistically here, uh, what I wanna just talk about really quickly is uh, something I did already mention about, but just to really you know, belabor the point, uh, is that of our help center and our support. Uh, so uh, a couple things. First off, of course, you have our help center, which does have the demo video recording of a webinar just like this. Feel free to register for future webinars as well. Um, that's a good way to be able to get this stuff. And maybe in a few weeks, if you want a recording of this webinar, you can reach out and see if we've processed it by then. But again, uh, I won't be ready for probably a couple weeks at least. So I would recommend checking out our existing ones. Uh, now, as for all of the other information that we talked about today, including a lot more stuff, definitely check out our help site. We've also got an FAQ about all different sorts of things you might have questions about. Uh, check that out. That's process.st slash help, or you go to the help center by clicking on the help button on the bottom right-hand corner here. Other things you can do, you can also make suggestions if you've got those. You can also contact support directly through here. So we've got a support team based everywhere in the world. We are a fully remote company. So uh, about a staff of about 35 uh, and, and everyone is everywhere. So uh, you can always contact us either by emailing support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at process.st or by going to contact support right here inside of the app. Doesn't matter either way, it goes to the exact same place for us to respond to you. So you can always click on that any time of day, anywhere. It'll pull up this little window. You can start a new conversation uh, with anyone on our team. Just like that, we respond very quickly. Of course, if you're sending us a message at 3 a.m. on a Saturday, uh, it, it might be a little bit longer than otherwise, but uh, we, we try to keep it still pretty, pretty quick. Now, uh, that's how you contact support. Now, if you're looking for any sort of training, any sort of things like that, what you're going to want to do is uh, you know, if you're already on a paid plan uh, with us, if you've already upgraded uh, and you haven't received your onboarding or anything like that and you'd like to, you'd like to receive training, like to receive any sort of consultation, anything of that nature, feel free to reach out. Reach out to support at process.st. Say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paying, but I haven't gotten this training yet. I need some help. 
uh, just let us know or we'll give you a link. You schedule that time, whatever works for you. And we'll jump on a call. If you're looking for that training and you guys haven't paid yet, that's okay too. Just feel free. Go ahead and upgrade. That's right up there in your organization settings. Choose a plan. Just go on in there. You've got that business, business pro and enterprise plan. Um, you know, the only difference is their business, uh, you know, gives you the unlimited checklists and templates as opposed to the limit of five on your free plan. Uh, and it gives you pretty much every single feature. The only difference is that business pro then gives you all that stuff plus additional support and conditional logic and stop tasks and custom branding. You can add a logo right there to your organization. Also shows up on all of the emails that get sent out of Process Street on your behalf and on any templates or checklists that you decide to print from Process Street. So that's Business Pro. Enterprise gives you that plus also single sign-on uh, and a couple other little things like that. And of course, additional uh, support on top of that. Higher plans, more, more support that we're able to provide you. Bigger teams, same thing as well. So Feel free to reach out with any questions that you guys have at all. I hope this has been helpful. Again, my name is Blake Bailey. I lead the customer success team here at Process Street. Thank you all for attending and hanging on for this lengthy broadcast. And I hope you all have the best of the rest of your day. Please take care. Thank you again. And I will talk to you real soon.